Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the media item buttons in Reaper. Now, the media item buttons are a great indicator for our items to see what's going on and what state they're in. By default, they're going to show up in the upper left corner of our items, but we're not seeing them now because by default, they only show up when they're active. But we could change that in the preferences. Let's go to the options menu and go down here and choose preferences. Then we can scroll down under appearance and choose media. And this section over here is devoted to the media item buttons. And we can see by default, there's going to be a button for each one of these states when they're active. But these buttons down here, are off by default when they're inactive. But we can change that in this dialog. For example, let's start with locked. If I select an item over here and right click it, go to item settings, and then lock the item, a little button shows up letting us know this item is locked. And if we click the button, it unlocks that item, but there's no button to lock it again. We either have to use an action or right click it again and choose it right here. But if we prefer to have this button all the time, just choose the option right here, not locked. And then if we apply this preference, all the items in our project have the locked button, whether it's locked or unlocked. So I could lock this item right here or unlock it, unlock this one at any point in our project. But again, this option is off by default. So we're only going to see those buttons if the item is locked. And the same thing if our items are muted. Let's select this one and either right click it, go to item settings and mute it, or we can use the keyboard shortcut Alt M on the PC or option M on the Mac, and that mutes or unmutes it. And then we see the mute button on that item. Again, we could hit it to unmute the item. We don't see that button unless the item is muted. Unless we choose this option right here. Apply it. And now on all the items in our project, we see that mute button all the time. So we can mute our items unmute them that easily. Like I said, we could use the keyboard shortcut if we want, but if you prefer to use buttons, just choose this option right here and all our items will have mute buttons all the time. And the same thing for item or take effects. So if I select this item and type Shift D, and that opens up the effects browser, to add an item effect or a take effect on this item. Let's add an EQ. And now the CQ is on this item. And we can see the button show up right here. So we can click it to open up the EQ. But again, it only shows up when there's an EQ on the item. Unless we choose this option right here, no effects. So if we hold down Alt on the PC, or option on the Mac and click the button, it clears the effect. But now we still have the effect button right here because we chose this option, no effects. So now we can click this button at any point and add effects to the item. But again, this is off by default. So we're not going to see that button unless there's effects on the item or the take. And the same thing for envelopes. If we right click the item, go to take and choose take envelopes, we could add envelopes to our items or takes. Let's add a volume one, a pan one, and a mute one. And they show up right here, along with this button up here. And if we click the button, we could add more, like the pitch, or take some away. And we could delete the envelopes 
both on the PC, option on the Mac, from here, and we no longer see the envelope button. But if we want to see it all the time, just choose it right here. And the same thing for notes. If we right click the item, go to item settings, item notes, we can add notes for our items and save it. And now we could see there's a note on this item. And we could open it by hitting the button. But if we delete it, we're not going to see that button on the item unless we choose no notes in the preferences. And now we see this button all the time. And we can click it and add notes as we need to. Then over here, we have the item properties, which is also off by default. But if we choose it and apply it, we're going to see this little button up here that'll open up the media item properties. Just click it, and that opens up the properties for that item. Of course, we could just double click the item, and that also opens up that window. But if you prefer to have this button all the time, just turn it on right here. And the default is that it's only going to be on if the media has been resampled. Then over here, which is on by default, we have pooled MIDI. If we duplicate this MIDI item, hold on Control on the PC or Command on the Mac and drag it over, these two items are still separate from one another. But if we wanted them to be the same, that's known as pooled. So instead, on the PC, hold on Control, Alt, and Shift. And on the Mac, hold on Command, Option, and Shift. And now if we drag it over, it's going to make a pooled copy. And we could see that they're pooled because of the buttons right here. And what's also kind of nice is if we select one of them, the buttons light up in this green, letting us know that all the green buttons are pooled with one another. If I select this one, they both turn green, letting us know which items are pooled. So it's a good idea to leave this option on, which it is by default. But if we want to unpool these items, alt on the PC, option on the Mac, and just click the button, and it goes away. And it'll work a similar way for groups. Let's select this one and this one, type G to group them. Now we can see up here that these items are grouped. If they're not selected, the buttons look like this. But if we click any member of the group, they all light up. So you can quickly see which items belong to this group. And again, to delete items from the group, Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and just remove them one by one. And again, this is on by default. Then we have this option over here that's going to hide our buttons if the height of our track is too small. Let's turn on all these options over here and apply it. And now our items have all these buttons on them for muting and locking and effects and envelopes. But if we change the height of this track, when it gets too small, the buttons go away. And that's based on this setting right here. It defaults to 49, but if we make it really small, like four, and now we make the track height even smaller, instead of disappearing, we see the buttons on top of the audio. But if we put it back to 49, we don't. They disappear from view. And there's one more option I want to show you, which isn't really a media item button. By default, the volume of our item can be adjusted with a handle on the top of our item or in the center, like this. Just bring it down to adjust the item volume or the take volume. But if you prefer, 
instead of using the handle, we could use a knob. And if we choose this, instead, it kind of looks like a button, but it's really a knob. So we can grab it right here and bring the volume down of our items or our takes or up and readjust it like that. And for MIDI, it readjusts the velocity. So you could bring it down to half our velocities or a quarter or bring it up to double the velocity. And we could double click it to bring it back to normal and the same with the volume of our items. Just double click it to put it back to zero. And again, by default, these are all off. So we're not going to see those buttons unless our items are locked, muted, have effects on them, envelopes, or notes, unless we choose this right here. And of course, you could turn these off as well if we don't want to see these buttons no matter what. But by default, it's like this. So that's pretty much it. That's the media item buttons in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.